Hi, this week's Weekly Roundup, we have a new SBC, a new digital oscilloscope, and lots of products on STEM. STEM, we've got so much on STEM. Just can't get away from it, can you? First up on Kickstarter, thanks to one of my subs for pointing this out to me, we have the OpenScope, which is an open source, but not open hardware, MCU-based oscilloscope. Since it's MCU based, it doesn't have the grunt that most oscilloscopes have, but certainly has a price tag for the average maker. Man, I'm having a hard time saying oscilloscope. I've always known them to be crows. Anyway, it has two analog scope channels at up to 6 mega samples per second, two digital inputs or outputs, Wi Fi and function generator. Nice. The grunt behind it is the PIC 32MZ MCU, which runs at 200 MHz and is accessible via the Arduino IDE. It's a nice board that's been kicking around for a while now. I've backed this one, so you'll be seeing a review on it when released. Now we have a desktop plastic injection machine. It's not attracting a lot of interest, as it's a fairly niche area, quite expensive, and it's generally a messy business. Anyway, we'll hopefully see the 6 grand price tag drop as it gains more interest. Then there's the X-Plotter, which is a desktop plotter, laser cutter and engraver, all in one. This is attracting a little more interest, being funded by a factor of 20 times. Some of the drawing demos are pretty outstanding, and it has a feature where it introduces some random changes in images, so that every print looks unique. Interesting. Of course, whack a laser in and you can engrave stuff or cut stuff up to 5mm thick. It can also function as a pick and place machine, with a resolution down to 12 microns, which isn't so crash hot for BGAs if you want to do PCB pick and place, but good enough for most SMDs. Polytic looks like a good STEM education kit. More STEM! It has several modules, the core module with a sequencer and mixer, combi with voltage controlled feedback and oscillator, VCO with oscillator and filter, and a noise generator. Nice little stem kit. Virtualette is a small SBC type board based on the Allwinner A20 MCU. Comes with 8 gig NAND flash, 1 gig DDR3 RAM, RTC, 100 megabit Ethernet, SATA, HDMI, USB and SD. It can be powered from either USB, battery or power over Ethernet, which is unusual. It's a very tempting board, except for the price tag. 285 Aussie dollars is a lot, and I'd have to have a very specific need for this one. Lastly, there's the Linus, which is another drawing hand robot thingy aimed at STEM education. See? More STEM. It has a cool feature, such as copying what you write in real time. Man, I wish I had this at school. All those lines I had to write out by hand during detention. Anyway, the price tag is pretty good on this one. Now, there was something on Indiegogo that I saw. Where the heck is it? Ah, there it is. The Tynosaur is a small AT Tiny 85 based board aimed at, once again, STEM education. It has everything on board so you can plug in and play around. They were successful on Indiegogo last year and seem to have their feet firmly in the education market. Over at Crowd Supply, there's a new pre launch for yet another open source 3D printer with a 190mm cubed print bed and other nice features that is, once again, aimed at STEM. Man, everywhere is quiet, even Tindy is slow this week. But if you're looking at an easy way of controlling two LED strips, then you could pick up this product. Don't ask me to say it, I have no idea how to pronounce it. They claim that you can control up to 180 RGB LEDs per strip, but be careful with this. At full brightness, each RGB LED consumes 60 milliamps. Two 180 LED strips will require almost 22 amps of juice. The very thin power tracks usually found in LED strips won't be able to cope with that much current. And don't even think of adding extra power supplies halfway through the strip. Things can get a little hot with that much current floating around. This LoRa dev kit looks interesting in that it contains not only a LoRa module but a SAMD21 MCU. Contains all the usual stuff from a SAMD21, which is 20 GPIOs, 48 MHz clock, but you also get a LoRa module as well. I quite like the SAMD21 MCUs and I'm thinking of building a couple of boards based off it. And you guessed it, yet another STEM education kit. This one based off the ubiquitous ESP8266, but aiming to reduce the cost as much as possible. If you're into PICs or have a need to program your EE proms, then this one will do it all for you. Capable of programming almost every PIC out there and a swag of EE proms as well. Compatible with Microchips PIC Kit and MP Lab IDE. Okay, now we're talking something unusual. Adafruit have a small LCD controlled blackout panel, which I've just had a great idea for. Controlled by a simple 5 volt input, and it's either on or off. Then there's Adafruit's capacitive touch screen cape for the Beagle Bone, with a 480 by 272 pixel resolution, but psst, you can get it cheaper at MCM Electronics. 
Then there's a 9DOF IMU based off the LSM 9DS1. But yep, it's out of stock again. Why do people keep buying these before I can get one? Sparkfront have their CY7C65213 based USB to UART breakout, which is a nice chip not only giving you a 6 pin UART, but a bunch of GPIOs as well. You can work on voltages as low as 2 volts. Palalu have their Roboclaw motor controller, which is capable of driving two motor loads at 15 amps per channel and between 6 to 34 volts. Also contains a Quadrature decoder controlled via USB, serial, RC or analog inputs. The Romi control board is an all-in-one robotic control board containing an Atmega 32U4, dual motor drivers, IMU, LCD, Quadrature encoder inputs and a Pi compatible header. Can control motors up to 2 amps. If you want some serious analog data capture, then check out this high speed data acquisition board using the AD9708 chipset, which is capable of 125 mega samples per second, and an op amp based on the AD8056 and 8 AD9280 ADCs running at 32 mega samples per second. So essentially, it's capable of sampling at 32 mega samples on 8 channels at an effective 8 bit resolution. And if you have those pesky 5 volt based breakout boards, you can pick up a cheap 16 channel logic level converter for a Pi. If you're into home automation, then this is a small RF transceiver running on 433 MHz with a USB port, so it can be used as either a transmitter for a keychain type remotes or as a receiver. Told you, more STEM.